Agile FM. Radio for the Agile Community. I'm your host, Joe Krebs. Agile.fm. My guest in this episode is Ken Schwebel, co-creator of the Scrum process and author of several books. The latest he wrote was with Jeff Sutherland, Software in 30 Days. In this episode, Ken and I were looking at the Agile Index and the path to agility, where Ken, with his company Scrum.org, takes companies, software development teams to the next level of agility. I hope you enjoy this one. You guys are up to something very, very interesting in the uh, in recent weeks, uh, the path to agility, agility path, and uh, all the work you're doing to uh, elevate the um, you know the level of agility in organizations and software teams around the world. You will talk about the path to agility at the Agile Day in New York which is held on the 19th of September uh, in New York. So we'll get a little bit of uh, exposure to your topic, but I'm here to actually discuss a few things. Uh, One of them is the path to agility, and that brings up the question of what is agile and why are we doing agile? Uh, Maybe we want to start with um, the path to agility by why we should be, why should we be doing agile? Yeah, and what is agile? What is agile? Well, let, let's say you take a, a manufacturing company like BASF. What is agility for BASF? I mean, or a power company, mm-hmm. or a bank who has mainframe systems that are 20 years old. Mm-hmm. Um, what is agility to them? Mm-hmm. So th- this is a big issue for organizations where someone says, we ought to be agile. Yeah. And, and what we found is that people view it as a... Um, something that's desirable just as a state of being. Mm-hmm. And, and so they start making huge investments to become agile. And typically those are unmanaged investments. Those are investments that you, know, you bring in lots of trainers, you um, um, maybe send people to classes, you buy tools, mm-hmm. LM tools, mm-hmm. um, testing tools, you buy all sorts of things. And um, after a while, you start wondering what you got yourself into. Right. So maybe generally in some pockets it feels a lot better than it used to. And some pockets you see it reverting and in some pockets, you know, they folded their arms and wouldn't even talk. Mm. So one of the things we, we've noticed is that only parts of organizations, and this is certainly different for a product company, um, need to be agile. Mm. So if I'm a me- big organization like a power company, um, I don't need to be agile in power generation. I need to be agile in acquiring power. Mm-hmm. If I'm a big bank, I don't need to be agile in terms of how I process my transactions. I may need to be agile in terms of how I build um, apps that will work on my new Google Vision or mm-hmm. Google Glasses. Um, but agility is used for competitive advantage or to address problems you're running into. Mm-hmm. So something we've, we've started doing is helping people, particularly the people who work with us, understand something we call scenario planning. In mm-hmm. fact, it's, a, it's been around for a long time. Yeah. Where uh, what you do is you, you track out what are the possible scenarios that you think might happen um, with your organization across the, the upcoming years. Mm-hmm. And you think of which one's the most likely, and then you start imagining what some of the alternate scenarios might be. Right. And you start thinking, okay, give what's, what are the most likely alternate scenarios, and what capabilities would we need if we get into those situations? Mm-hmm. And you start setting up triggers that you can identify to watch for those situations. Mm-hmm. Um, now, if you start needing new capabilities because something's changing, Um, One of our um, customers, um, something that changes, they shut down nuclear plants in Germany. Oh, that's a big deal. Yeah. Um, Then they need to quickly put in high value capability that can address these problems. So there they need agility and there it's worth investing in. Mm -hmm. Um, You still want to monitor investment, make sure you get return on investment, 
But um, agility is something that may spread across industry, may spread across the world, um, but probably what will kill the concept of agility is people trying to use it without thinking whether they need it or not. Right. So, so one of the examples you made with the nuclear power plant is really on the business side, uh, often it's like acquiring uh, energy or acquiring um, power uh, right. as, a, as, a, as a power company. Uh, other examples are more on the software side when we're building apps. So do you see like there's a general concept of connection between the future with a path of agility of the business and IT or the business in itself is interlinked with I, agility? I, I think agility is only cost justified now, particularly as you're helping developers change and become better. Mm -hmm. um, when you have a business case when you have a business case that will justify the investment in creating that capability. Mm -hmm. Because you not only have, you have two capabilities that are needed. One, software, um, people that can build those types of products, capabilities, systems. Secondly, the business being able to adopt them and use them, embed them into the business and change the way they do business to take advantage of them. Mm -hmm. So, you're really stuck with two levels of agility that are needed. Um, and this is why, you know, these agile things of let's change our IT organization, but the business doesn't change. Yeah. What a waste of money. Yeah. Well, some some teams, that have, especially IT, where the, where the business units are small, where the, the company itself is IT, ah, yes. they have they see some very good um, oh, absolutely. benefits, right? Like autotrader.com. Yeah. Yeah. The whole business is, is a web-based business that, that brokers um, mm. things. Um, so um, that and product companies like um, SAP, mm. um, um, any of these companies, where software is their business, mm -hmm. which um, which strange enough is becoming more and more yeah. every company. Right, yeah. all the app developments and all these things. Yeah. So maybe a good example is, I mean, a, a big hype I've recently seen on, or just recently on Twitter is um, Microsoft buying uh, Nokia. And Nokia was like five, six years ago, was like the flagship of, you know, look at, the agile development organization at Nokia. We have the Nokia tests and yeah. all these kind of things. And now the company is basic. So basically, maybe we have focused too much on the IT side of uh, Nokia, but not much on the business agility side. We, we for our, for working with product owners, we came up with Nokia and um, Research in Motion, mm -hmm. which I, is now called BlackBerry, I guess. Yeah. Um, as two examples of companies that didn't have alternate scenarios. Yeah. So um, Nokia, its strategy was we will set the standards and then dominate the standards by being there first mm -hmm. with the lowest possible cost products. Yeah. Okay, that worked until 3G and 4G came in. Mm -hmm. Then gone. Yeah. Um, research in Motion, their thing was security, the corporate security of email is the most important thing. And we will dominate that by selling to corporations. Right. Whoops. Yeah. So neither of these companies had alternate scenarios in mind. Neither of them were primed and saying, what will we do mm -hmm. if this happens, if that happens? Yeah. Um, we got a, a query, which strangely enough, no one's followed up on, from Dolby. Oh. So you see sound by Dolby. Yeah. Apparently, more and more companies are offering alternates that are better than Dolby. So you go to movie theater now, particularly 3D movies. Mm -hmm. You won't see sound by Dolby, you see sound by others. Yeah. yeah. And and they actually don't have a product, they have a, a set of patents. They yeah. own patents. Mm -hmm. Who? Yeah. Even if you don't have a scenario, and let's say your likely scenario materializes, you still need to follow up scenarios. I mean, it's an ongoing effort, right? It's like you even let's say you're lucky with your business plan, even if you didn't have alternative scenarios, yeah. you hit the bullseye and you're all good, but What's next? What's right? next? Right. So, are you going to go in operational mode, or are you going to keep going? I mean, all these companies, uh, these energy companies, or BASF, you mentioned earlier, these all companies have transformed over the years. That's why they're in business for 120 years. Many of these companies don't make it even that far anymore. So interesting. Um, what I, we found with scenario planning is that some companies don't like it because it makes you explore possibilities. And if Nokia had explored possibilities, 
you know, when you have to do scenario planning, they might have been ready. Mm. So two examples in our industry right now, which would be really interesting for scenario planning, are Apple and Microsoft. Mm -hmm. I wonder what their scenarios are. Right. Some are transparent or some are yeah. less transparent. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I, Microsoft, we have yet to find a company that's failing that we won't buy. <laughs> <laughs> That's a scenario. Yeah, that's a scenario, <laughs> right? So now, this the interesting part of um, what what you recently have been working on is this um, the agility path. Yes. What, what? So we are. Let's say we have this. And this correct me if I'm mm -hmm. wrong. If I misunderstand, this there is a company they want to be agile. Right? There is a reason for being agile. They have a business case for being agile. But there's this path. Why don't you just? You know, tell the listeners um, listening to this to this podcast um, what that path is, and you know, is that is that a quick path? Can we do that in two weeks? Can I be agile in two weeks with a path to agility? Well, it depends, doesn't it? Yeah. Wow, that's like a consult. Well, can I be a, Can I be in one week agile with a path to agility? Well, you could take an assessment and call yourself an agile. <laughs> yeah, that'd be good. <laughs> I'd certify you as an agile person. Okay. All right. So, how would we start? How would you take me, like forget the two weeks, obviously, but uh, how would we start with the path to agility? Well, I, I would start by, by asking you to evaluate um, what are your competencies right now in terms of being able to rapidly deliver valuable products um, that are important to you. Mm -hmm. And so you might be able to measure that in terms of um, operational things like, you know, what is your cycle time of being able to get features to market? What is your time between releases? What is your stabilization time, number of defects? So all those would be important measurements. Mm -hmm. Productivity is an important measurement because productivity toward what? Yeah. So that's a fault. But then on the enterprise level, you know, the level where you want to make the impact, uh, you want to measure things like um, revenues per employee. Mm. So if we have an area of the business um, and we're doing the right things, and we're even set up right so we're selling them right, mm -hmm. um, the revenue employee are going to go up very quickly. If we're doing can, things that aren't the right things or we're not becoming very agile operationally, we're not going to have much of an impact. Mm -hmm. um, so there are lots of things you could say like, um, well, how many dollars do we make for that product? But all of these have all these other influences which make it a very, very difficult uh, metric to use. Mm -hmm. So we've taken one which has a number of influences of which an Agile initiative should be a key one. Mm. Um, revenues per employee, and we've looked at that. Um, we've also looked at how much have, right now are you investing in product, um, in these products? And okay, so you're going to be now investing in agility, plus you're going to be investing more in developing these products. What is the return in sales on this investment? So your return on investment. Mm -hmm. And you can also just track that for your actual dollar spent on agility. Mm -hmm. What's your return on investment for that investment in agility? Right. And then you might also want to combine it into things like customer satisfaction. That'd be a pretty important one. Mm -hmm. And what we do with in this agility path, agility path is nothing. It's just this bunch of tools that we use. Mm -hmm. So anyone can use them. Mm -hmm. What we do with all those metrics is we meld them into something we call an agility index. Right which is heavily weighted toward enterprise metrics and lightly weighted toward operational because it doesn't matter if you're good operationally if you have no impact on the enterprise. Right. So that, that would be the assessment of, let's say, the agile, the, the first agile index, that assessment, uh, looking at those scenarios and all these things, that would return a, an agile index for me. Now that's the starting point, right? Right. Now we start working together. It's like, okay, this is where we are. So it's obviously more than a week or two to get to, to other oh. levels. So, so um, maybe we can do a scenario plan if you don't have one in mm -hmm. a month, because it requires a lot of thinking in the business department. Right. Um, you can do a baseline of your agility right now, both in terms of practices, capabilities of your developers, project managers, and, and um, business people. Mm -hmm. And you can assess your metrics in a week. It's not hard to do. Okay. So then, what do you want to do to become more agile? Okay. Um, let's say 
um, someone comes in with a company and says, we will make you agile, mm. good. And they charge a million and a half dollars, good. And this is a great friend of the CFO, so yeah. they hire them. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll let them use that person, not we have any choice, yeah. and we'll measure the increased agility, the return on investment, the progress, the increased capability of the developers across time and see if the return on investment's there. If you want to run an experiment, we can take two areas of IT mm -hmm. and the business and try one approach. Maybe we could try safe mm -hmm. in one area. We could try this guy for a million and a half in another area. Yeah. And we could compare the return on investment. Mm -hmm. So Scrum's you know, like just a real simple technique used in almost everything, mm -hmm. even safe. Yeah. Um, what we're looking at is who you're using and what, they're, what you're paying them and what the impact on your increased agility and competitiveness is. Yeah. So what is, the index is obviously a number between one and 100, yep. right? So uh, that number is being determined after we would obviously reassess in a periodic fashion, maybe three months or however how often we want to do that. Well, we probably, we have um, like 400 key um, practices for agility and good software development, good product management. Mm -hmm. And we assess those on a monthly basis, um, if you want, mm -hmm. because what that allows you to do is see where you, you know, which ones you've mastered and which ones you want might want to do next. Okay. So this mm -hmm. would be a way of of going after areas bit by bit by bit. Mm -hmm. Probably measuring your metrics, which is real easy to do, mm -hmm. um, can be misleading because metrics are certainly a lagging indicator. Mm -hmm. When you change the way you work, the metrics follow. Slowly, operational yeah. metrics, metrics more quickly, but enterprise metrics very slowly. Yeah. So three months, six months, it's yeah. good enough. Mm -hmm. And then we would see how the the impact is of our one and a half million guy or yep. the, the the safe process, and we would see what the impacts are, and uh, if we are getting to the level of where we feel like we are an agile enterprise. So now, where would I? Where is that line? Is that like something? Uh, the agile index determines, or is it something the company said would say, how agile do you want to be? Well, I think agility um, is used for competitive advantage mm -hmm. or to achieve something. So I would say, for instance, this power company in Germany, um, when they are able to manage fluctuating power inputs um, to provide stable power to their customers, mm -hmm. um, then they have achieved adequate agility for that scenario. Now, they may want to map out another scenario, which is the gas pipeline to Russia just shut down. What do we do? Right. Um, but you reach um, the state of agility or, or competence you need mm -hmm. when you're able to satisfy what you set out to do. Right. And um, that might be you know, having a product that dominates the marketplace. Mm -hmm. So there's no, there's no, obviously, there's no fixed number, right? Like I, no. Let's say I start with your first assessment and my number is 10. I might drink champagne when the number's 50, you know, but there's still way to go. Yeah. So the, the question is how agile do you want, how much more agility do you want to add to your... Uh, Are you achieving what you want? Mm -hmm. and, and that's why it's so important for the business to drive this mm -hmm. and IT to measure their operational part and the business to measure their use of it to create value in the area where they want. Mm -hmm. So if the business can create value without agility, forget it. Right. If they can create enough agility using SAFE, that's fine. Yeah. If they really need high performing, you know, great one or support teams, they probably will have to invest more um, to accomplish what they need. Mm. It's actually a very interesting point you're making because the uh, power companies, they used to be all monopolies. They didn't need agility. No. <laughs> now, now, now anyone can sell their power. Right. So even in Germany, state company, you have people knocking on your door saying, I'm going to sell power. Uh, it's, oh, it's EMBW's power, but we're going to sell it through our company. Right. And EMBW is going like, ah. Right. So they're using the, the same pipe, you know, pipelines and all these things. Yeah. They're just having a, a different service. Yeah, we have that in Boston, too. Yeah. yeah. You know, this, this model works here as well. I'm getting advertisements around uh, green energy yep. and all these things uh, uh, all the time. I think this is a, a typical thing, but monopolies don't need that path to agility. There is nobody to compete with. I think they're confronted with a new situation mm. to do this. So I was just watching a series about Rockefeller controlling 
gas because it, it fed kerosene lanterns. And suddenly there was Edison and um, wasn't Vanderbilt, um, someone else, um, with electricity. Mm -hmm. Whoa! Oh my God. Well, thank God Carnegie was there with steel because that made cars and then you wouldn't have to make um, kerosene. And then, but that was serendipity. That yeah. wasn't his alternative. So yeah. even a monopoly is only good for so long. Right. Well, so now if I'm not a monopoly, which I'm not, yeah. <laughs> then um, let's say we have assessed our work after six months uh, in path to agility. And let's say I became a little bit more agile. Um, and let's say I'm uh, a competitor to uh, the energy company we were talking about. Is there any kind of way for me to compare myself to others in the industry and my agility? Well, we accumulate anonymously all of the agility data. And so by standard industry code, we use an international version of it. Mm -hmm. um, we can compare you to other like power companies. Um, and you can see um, where you stack up. Mm -hmm. um, that would be then on the index side only, right? Yeah, on that the index be, side. That would we, be like, don't I'm 50, the other one is 55. Right. And that gives Not me some. Not why. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that, that's also an interesting metric uh, around that. So Ken, you wrote the Enterprise and Scrum I did. book many years ago, six, why? seven years ago. That sure wasn't used. And then Jeff and I wrote um, Software in 30, Software days. 30 Days, which kind of went at the same topic. Mm -hmm. um, the problem with our, the approaches to both of those that we saw was safe is neither of them are easy. They require you to think. So what we're doing with this whole agility PS set of products is saying, if it is really, really important um, for you to gain competitive advantage and you need to measure and make sure you're spending your money wisely, mm. here's a set of tools you can use to make sure you're getting the most for your money. Mm -hmm. um, there's a book we wrote that may help you. Yeah. There are methodologies out there that may help you. It's up to you. Yeah. Um, we're not prescript prescriptivity. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. Um, doesn't work. Yeah. If there is a company out there um, saying we have uh, employed something other than Scrum as an agile process, let's say XP or Safe, or how would they? Maybe just the two of them. How would they rank on the agile index? Would that make an impact on the agile index? If they would use different or well, it depends. Um, approach depends where they start from. So that'd be the first thing. Um, second thing that would would matter is you can do anything. It's how serious you are about it, mm. and that'll show up in the enterprise metrics. Um, so take you can take any approach you want. I could probably use safe. Um, and if I use it very intelligently and adapted and use it appropriately to my organization, mm -hmm. I could do good things with it. Yeah. Um, could, you, could you reach a level of 100 with it on your scale? Would that be possible? Oh. Or is that, I mean, I'm. See, I, I don't. going to the same heights. Could we potentially go to the same heights by. I'm just. Uh, yes, we would start obviously with on different levels. Maybe we have different motivations of going agile, but it would some local agile process implementation lead me further than others? See, if I were permitted to change the methodology here within SAFE um, to eliminate hardening sprints, mm. um, probably I'd be closer to 100. But the moment I start um, um, accumulating technical debt, it's impossible. Mm -hmm. And hardening sprint um, bit, applies to technical yeah. debt accumulation. Yeah. So some ideas um, that are out there are easier to use because they don't make you do the hard things. Mm -hmm. um, you can, of course, use them and still do the things which are harder to do. To, what, what, what has to come to the bottom of this is if you need agility to do something that's really important, it's not easy. You yeah. can't get it for cheap. Mm -hmm. And time-consuming. Yep. It's wherever you start, obviously, there's a... Uh, time associated with the, your agile transition, so it guides yep. you through your um, agile transition. Is there is there a backlog? Are we applying the principles <coughs> of Scrum to the path to agility? Is there like is that a part of the 
the coaching, like in that intervals, whenever you assess or uh, look at the companies uh, interested in increasing their agility index, are you um, are you using a framework of Scrum behind it to to manage that process? We we have one that's available. Um, it, it's a way of creating change mm -hmm. in an iterative, incremental way um, that's measurable. Um, it's it's pretty documented in the enterprise in Scrum and software in thirty days. Yeah. Except here, it's a formal set of processes that are well documented. Um, you could use it, or you could use you could hire John Cotter mm -hmm. um, Enterprises and have them do your change. Mm -hmm. Um, the, the thing that matters is not which process you use, the mm -hmm. thing that matters is um, what are your revenues per employee, what's your product, you mm -hmm. know, customer satisfaction. So the outcome is the important thing. Yeah. So the, the Agile Index, if somebody's interested, like let's say a, an executive is listening to this uh, recording, um, would they need to know the ins and outs of um, Scrum to uh, increase their Agile Index? Or is that is that framework of creating more agility? Like, if they're not necessarily, if they're not necessarily the uh, an agile team, like building software, yep. like someone executive is it? I'm interested in that. I want to increase my um, agility. I'm interested in uh, gaining a competitive advantage. Um, I'm ready for it. Do they need to know Scrum? Do they need to come to Scrum trainings? Uh, or uh, what would they? In, what would be their interface? I, I certainly would. Um they certainly probably are interested in limiting and waste. Is that any hot topic? Um, secondly, they're probably interested in being able to turn as conditions change mm -hmm. in different scenarios. Um, so they wouldn't have to know Scrum, Agile. They'd have to know and demand what they need. Mm -hmm. And the danger of them only focusing on agil agil Agility Index without someone supporting them is numbers can be gained. Mm -hmm. Um, we have seen already um, that people will take all the subordinate metrics for um, the Agile Index and they will make it cause the Agility Index to increase. So we, you know, when this is important to someone, we compare practice patterns with metrics emergent patterns and we see if they make sense. Mm -hmm. If we have done absolutely nothing that would cause value to go up, if we don't see things like a clear ordered list of requirements and, and value being one of the main things, and yet we see um, those numbers changing in that drive in the Agile Index, we you know advise that maybe that's being gamed. Yeah. Mm, um, yeah. Mm. Not that people do that. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> you just came back from Europe. I and, did. Uh, there's the Agility Path, and uh, you did some coaching and work over there. Do you see any difference between the agility path being applied, accepted, embraced, either Europe or Asia or the United States, or is this one of the common common interests right now? Do you see any cultural uh, differences in approaching this topic? Um, so to so take the topic and say, um, that this is not about agility or agility path or anything. This is about someone being dead serious about managing their IT organization in areas that are critical to them. Mm -hmm. um, so this is, all these ideas that we have in here in tools are ways of managing your investment and ensuring that you maximize your return on it. Mm -hmm. And if the return is toward um, doing something like supplanting energy from nuclear or other things like that, making sure that it happens fast enough that you, you're you not caught in a scenario like bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. um, so these are management tools you can do to cause, to try other approaches. Um, and I think that's um, kind of a universal need. Mm -hmm. like we see a lot of interest in it in the United States. We see a lot of interest in Europe. Um, Asia, I don't, oh yeah, we have a lot of interest in Asia, Indonesia, mm -hmm. um, Australia. Mm -hmm. I don't know if New Zealand's considered okay. itself Asia. Probably <laughs> Australia would be a little offended too, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I have no experience with, oh, and Vietnam. Vietnam, yeah, oh yeah, okay. 
Well, wow, so one of the metrics, uh, just like one of the last questions I have here for you is, uh, you mentioned the, the one metric, revenue per employee. Yeah. Um, will the path to agility cause a lot of layoffs? Because, you know, we could increase that number by getting rid of people. Oh, absolutely you could. And what that would cause them to do, and this is why we have customer satisfaction, employee satisfaction, is you're going to start getting turnover of your best people. Mm -hmm. And they're going to go to Google or somewhere like that. And because those the people who remain are going to start writing worse products, you're going to start getting customer dissatisfaction. So these are balanced metrics. You yeah. can't screw around with one yeah. um, without the other two getting perverted. Mm -hmm. For at least a period of time, but you will notice it, right? There's you a check and it. balance. Yeah, like almost like in the Scrub Framework, which is check and balance. There's a check and balance between those. Uh, Inspect and adapt. And it's that. Inspect and adapt. Yeah, I used to work for Honeywell, and they used to call it eating your children. <laughs> <laughs> you can do it for a while, but eventually you run out of kids. <laughs> wife, wife won't get pregnant again. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> oh, well, I should leave on that note, you know. <laughs> what a good ending. What a great ending. What a great ending. Hmm. Mm. What's that? 21 I offended, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ken, always nice, great talking to you. Uh, you always have some uh, very good insights, uh, great mission you're up to. Um, can't wait to see more metrics to come in around uh, the agility path and yep. that the uh, industry as a whole uh, begins to mature even further than it already is. We hope this helps um, those with needs succeed. Thank you. See you in September 19th at we'll the NHL there. Day. Thank you. We will be there. Thank you for listening to Agile FM Radio. If you are interested in learning more about today's guests, past guests, or learn more about the upcoming program and future guests, please go to our website at agile.fm. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.